All right, we're ready. Broadcast now, and we're recording. And hi, Heather Ash. Hey, Zina. I so happy am, to be here. I'm just fresh from Singapore, Thailand, Sri Lanka, and Japan. I got yeah. up at 1 a.m. today and haven't slept yet. So I thought, well, today will be fun with you. <laughs> So, um, so welcome to everyone and thank you so much for joining us tonight. And I just want to call out how damn cool Heather Ashamara is in her Airstream with her tea ceremony kit and her goddess green tea. Tell me, how is the tea? <laughs> the tea is amazing. <laughs> Hi, I Vanessa. She says, hello, we're just babes. <laughs> I seriously, I just, I like open and just smell it. I know. I, I've, had, so I've had a few people send me a note and say, can you please just make it into like a body? Oh, yeah, like something. You know, something like a bath bomb or something. And I was like, yeah, absolutely. It's lychee and apricot and green tea and lemongrass. It's really spectacular. It's really, it really absolutely almost as spectacular as you. <laughs> <laughs> So I wanted to start tonight um, by saying cheers, everyone who's joining us, either live or um, upcoming. Um, thank you so much for taking the time for tea. Um, hi, Valerie. Oh, we're looking forward to having this tea with you, too. Mm -hmm. I have found that having a cup of tea with sisters um, absolutely can change the world. Um, I went to an all women's college and it was owned by a secret sisterhood of 350,000 women all over the globe. And they were super quiet and how they recruited people like me um, was through tea, tea parties. And they would invite us to tea, check us out, see if they wanted to support us and give us a full scholarship. And it was through tea that I was able to be the first person in my family, my immigrant family to attend college. So. Tea opens a lot of doors, and it's opened the door with um, Heather Ash here and her incredible teachings from Warrior Goddess Training, which is really become a classic when it comes to women and balance and compassion and self-care. And Heather Ash, welcome tonight to this sacred tea ceremony amongst sisters. Thanks so much, Zena. I'm so, so happy to be here. And I just wanted to share that Dipti is here with me. Say hi. hi. She's never met before. She was just part of a class that I taught. And <laughs> it was just one of those great sisterhood things of like, I'm in Memphis. I'm in Memphis. Well, come on over for tea. So it's perfect. It's perfect. <laughs> well, and that, that is what I just got back, like I said, from um, I was in uh, Singapore and Thailand and Sri Lanka and with our tea workers who actually grew this green tea in Sri Lanka and um, Japan. And it was so incredible to be reminded that in those cultures, tea is a central point of how people connect. And in the West, we're, um, we're often busy or people meet for a happy hour. And the goal with magic hour is to meet for a magic hour, which is a time for transformation, connection, togetherness, and not necessarily, um, you know, it's not like I don't love my wine, but it's, it's a time for a sacred connection that is totally present and um, really in a state of health and wellness. So Heather Ash, tell us a little bit about the warrior goddess um, training that you did in this box and um, what you hope it imparts for people. Absolutely. So a lot of what we did with this box was really start to explore the different energies of what is a warrior and what is a goddess and to look at how to get balance with those two energies and that it's not about getting 50 50 50 percent warrior 50 percent goddess and you can check it off your list and never think about it again that really the process of transformation and alchemy that we're talking about is a lifetime practice and learning how to balance the warrior qualities of focus clarity persistence commitment as well as the goddess qualities of opening creativity flow are really vital for all of us and finding what our unique blend of those two qualities is. What I found too, which was interesting since I've met you and, and read the book a lot, I actually read Warrior Goddess Training a long time ago, it was, it's that there's a no, um, 
blame, no shame sort of methodology you come in with that I, I just instantly felt comforted and, and accepted and okay in these teachings rather than you're the teacher, I'm the student. I felt like we were united on this journey together. So tell us a little bit about how these energies can balance and what that ritual looks like on a daily basis. Yeah, it's really about, like for me, community is so critical of also balancing the individual, our individual personal path, which is more warrior, as well as our community path, which for me is goddess. Like women have always sat in circles and connected with each other through physical tactile work or tea, you know, like something that brings us together. And for me, we're all on a journey. And that journey is a lifetime journey. And it's really about learning to be compassionate with ourselves and with others. And for women, what I've noticed is that the place that we create the most suffering is the place that we abandon ourselves. And when we abandon ourselves through comparison, criticism, like so many ways that we do, that we are then really out of balance. And so warrior goddess training is to help women look at both the big picture, how did we get here? As well as the small, like, he, and here are the little tasks that we need to do to get free, really, because it really is about personal well, freedom. What I find too in, in keeping with that is that it feels like you are giving us many soul retrievals <laughs> on a regular daily basis versus I remember going to my first soul retrieval, which is a shamanistic, um, it, you know, process. And I remember thinking, am I going to be okay? Am I going to survive this? And then when I was in it, it was like, holy cow, this is super painful. And what I love about what you into, almost, it's almost like, it's, it's like, a very comfortable approach to retrieving those pieces of our soul in a gentle daily manner. And so talk a little bit about how we do that as women who are really in our masculine right now, really in that warrior space right now, because we have to be, because <laughs> the planet basically depends on it. And how do we balance that on a daily basis and retrieve those parts of our soul? Yeah, the truth is the 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 structure that humans have created depend on it. The planet doesn't depend yeah. on it. <laughs> the planet will absolutely survive us. Yeah, right. <laughs> exactly. But I definitely know what you mean. The structures that we're in, so a lot around business and family, there's a lot of masculine focus, clarity, push, make it happen. And it's really harming us. So to come back into every day, how do we nourish ourselves? Every day, how do we slow down a little bit? Every day, how do we come back to our heart and learn to listen? And, you know, when I first started this path, I was very much like, all right, I'm going to fix myself and I'm going to like this, how long this is going to take and then I'm going to go back with, to the rest of my life. And I really, it took me a while, I was stubborn, but over the years I started realizing this isn't about fixing. This isn't about getting to the end of something and then I can have my life. This is about living my life every day. And that's what I really work to teach women is that it's not that there's going to be this huge catharsis probably and then you're done. Mm -hmm. I just don't believe you're done, right? With there, the every day, how are you washing the dishes? How are you nurturing your body? How are you walking? And like that is what changes everything. So true. It's so true. I, 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 from talking with you and from my own learning how to not be in the masculine, because as a single mom with a baby with a birth defect, I had to become like a gnarly businesswoman that could, you know, take on the medical system and get my son, you know, my baby boy, his medical care. And I, I realized it was so, I had so much momentum in the warrior phase. I didn't know how to actually return back to the goddess phase. It almost felt like I was um, not being responsible if I was being in my receptive mode. And that's taken, that's taken years to, to detox from. And so how do you suggest women who are in one or the other more dominantly, how do you suggest, I know in the box, I don't wanna give away your teaching because the exclusive <laughs> video we did with you, truly, I've watched it so many times 
and I've, I've done the practice so many times. I really want everyone watching to know that this video we did with Heather Ash was so simple and so absolutely profound that it could go down into one of those like conversations with God level <laughs> sort of teachings. But how do you suggest moving from when, you know, we're going to work, we're raising kids, we're, or we're not, or we're running businesses, we're running households or something. How do you suggest we go from one to the other in a very gentle flow? Mm -hmm. It's about holding, because we do need the warrior energy, mm -hmm. but it's about being able to let go. There's a tractor going by, so give me one minute. Bye, you know you're, you're in an Airstream, and I experienced this when we were shooting your video, <laughs> so I, I have the utmost respect for how you do this. <laughs> oh my God, that windstorm when we were recording before was so funny. All right, so... It's about real like like that. There's going to be distractions. You're going to get thrown off course. There's going to be challenges that arise. And it's not about avoiding the challenges or looking for the challenges. For me, it's about realizing that we can live our lives with awareness, be clear about what our intent is and what we want to create for ourselves. And there's going to be times you pick up, for example, warrior energy, use that energy. It's needed but then put it back down again. And that's the learning, really. And there's times that you need the goddess energy, that you pick that up and use that energy as needed and then put it down. You're not either one of those, you're none, you're none of it. You're fluid, you're the I, space between. I think the knowing when to put it down, mm -hmm. knowing when to transition might be, I might be projecting and speaking for myself, but I think, with all the thousands of women I've coached over the years, that seems to be the issue. One of my clients who I adore used to say, I don't know how to dismount. Like, <laughs> I don't know how to actually yeah. get off the horse after yes. I'm done charging the gates. You know, it's like, exactly. so, so when do you know when one is up and it's time to transition into the flow of the other? Are there any specific clues or hints? Definitely really listening to your body. And what you'll find is that as you start to get to know yourself, and for me, the whole path is about self-intimacy. That's it. Getting to know yourself. And not yourself of who you were 20 years ago or who you think you should be now, but actually where are you? And as you listen to your body, and it takes some time to build the trust back again with our bodies, I, I found, you'll start to get the subtle hints. And what I think about it is they're like poker tells. So in poker, really good professional poker players, they know what kind of hand their partner has because they've studied their partner so thoroughly. And they know, okay, that partner, when they have a little tick on their right eye, that means they have a good hand because they've watched, right? Um, or, you know, if their left cheek goes down slightly, they have a bad hand. So we want to learn our own tells. And like for me, my tell, and it's been funny because I got here and I've been really like, uh, like, ooh, and I realized I'm in driving mode. I'm in like, I'm getting to Memphis driving uh -huh. mode and I had to transition, but, but I could feel in my body, there's a, this leaning forward and like push. And it's like, come on, uh -huh. sweetie, what do you need? And I just listen, it's like, get on your bike, go ride around a little bit. I'm like, but I'm gonna be all sweaty for my, you know, call with Zena, get on the bike, ride around, okay. And that flipped it. Oh, yeah. So uh -huh. it's that subtle listening self-intimacy what a beautiful i mean we keep hearing about self-care and it it almost feels like a shame point in some ways it's like oh i didn't have time to self-care today like but but self-care is what you're saying it's it's hearing the cues of the inner life that are original and not derivative that are sacred and that are subtle and that take you just almost like empathically listening to self yes. versus trying to strive now for self-care. Like, <laughs> at first I was like, okay, I'm going to go self-care. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ooh, 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 ooh. <laughs> exactly. That's like the war we're going into. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it's like the warrior managing goddess in a self-care exactly. sort of setting. Exactly. But I love that. I love that. It's a self-intimacy, which comes from empathic listening.
listening for, of the self. Yeah. And, and it takes time. It's a skill. It's mm, a skill to mm. learn. And, and especially as women, we don't have that skill. We often do not know how to listen to ourselves or how to listen to our bodies. And so coming, you know, the simple thing I always do over and over again is hand on heart, hand on belly, come back, come back. Hi, sweetie. Yeah. <sighs> well, that's what you taught in the video. Yeah. And, and I remember, like, I, I think I've read something of you saying that, but it was interesting to actually do it alongside you. And I noticed, like, even on the plane coming back from Tokyo last night, we were you know, we had some turbulence and I, you know, start shooting sweat out of my palms automatically. Right. <laughs> and, you know, I've got my nine-year-old little goddess daughter to my right. And I was like, it's okay, sweetie. Like I did the practice oh, where it was like in the moment, you know, hand on belly, hand on heart. And it was like, no, no, I get it. And so I think the self uh, intimacy is, is really a self-soothing as well as a a, a self-parenting in so in so many ways, right? Yeah, absolutely. And that's what I what I um, tell. You know, I just had a class, and in the class, I was saying, really, your job is to reparent yourself, it's to become mm -hmm. the mother that you didn't get, yeah. or to, like whatever part of you needs support and guidance. And and really, this work is not about cutting apart, cutting away the parts of you that you don't like. Yeah. Yeah, we don't get rid of the part that, you know. Well, what I like about what you're saying, too, is the it's it's no longer blaming or, or being in shame about what didn't happen in your youth. It's taking full responsibility for it now, right? Oh, and Vanessa's saying she grew up with a single mom, so she had to be both mom and dad. Oh. Vanessa, I was a single mom with my son. Being here in the masculine energy most of the time to try and compensate for my dad leaving, tapping into my own feminine has been a journey. <laughs> I've always been more in masculine energy. Yeah, me too, Vanessa. I was my mom's mom and dad. Mm -hmm. I was my dad's mom and dad. I felt I was the eldest, and I and they were they didn't always know what they were doing ever. Um, anyway, <laughs> but I love them. They did the best they could. But I I do think that as we get older, we we have to learn like like what Heather Ash is saying is when we're compensating for something and when we're authentically present, right? When we're actually there. And that's like a, those are deep, deep habits we have. And so Heather Ash, is there a way that you could give us a little bit of a hint on if, if you had any issues growing up that maybe you overcompensated for in a past relationship where you learned very specifically how to know when you're in it in the deep groove and when and how to pull yourself back out of it hi diva nice to see you yay yeah i say one of the biggest things that i really that i still work with is around being nice and pleasant like that was so ingrained in me and and not even directly but just i just took that on and, and I think it's a lot of things that women take on. It's like, we can't be too big. We can't be too obnoxious. We can't take up too much space. And yeah, so and when I- poppy syndrome. Yeah. And when I um, catch myself doing that now, because I still, every once in a while, I'll be like, why do I feel weird? Or what's going on? And I'll check in and be like, right, I'm doing this thing. And- what I've, I say the biggest gift that I've learned about making transformation is that if you can learn to not judge yourself for when you get triggered yeah. and simply mm -hmm. witness and be curious, be like, oh, I'm doing it again versus I can't believe I'm doing it again. So mm -hmm. often it's how we talk to ourselves, it's the questions that we ask. And when we're asking questions out of frustration, negativity, um, anger, then we're judging and that, that all the energy that would go into transforming the, the pattern gets lost. Mm -hmm. So when we're able to witness and just go, oh, I'm doing it again. Now I have energy to make a new choice. Mm. Oh, we have a lot of comments here. I just wanna, I wanna honor some of that because what you said is so resonating. So Denise says, 
part of my journey, my life pains manifest as pain in my body. Absolutely, Denise. Mm -hmm. um, anything you can share to help release that energy? Um, and then Roxanne says, I feel you on that. And when I try to set boundaries, I get the feedback that I come off harsh. <laughs> Roxanne, my, uh, uh, my husband has been known to call me a ball buster. Um, yeah, I get you. Um, so uh, Denise um, mentioned, you know, her life pains manifest as pain in her body. So that sounds like that's another thing of self-intimacy, knowing when that pain in the body is actually a pain emotional pain or a past pain manifesting or do you have any tips on that i found it incredibly helpful to talk with your body directly and to keep stopping yourself from making up any story about what the pain is or what it means or like connecting it to pain you've had in the past just pain is present period let me be with mm. the pain now and to ask what does it need to help it to unwind what's it connected to and that it's a conversation it's trying to tell you something whether that's you need to move your body in a different way or whether that there's old emotional pain please clear it out and what i always go back to is movement when there's pain present even if it's little movement to to because so often pain that we're holding in the body is really emotional pain that's manifesting as physical pain and so to put on music even if you can barely move you can lie on your back and wiggle your fingers and start talking to your body or if you can move more to ask your body to give your body permission to express to start moving the energy and you don't need to know what you're moving why what happened whose fault it is you don't need to know any of it it's about that yeah. that gift of being with your body and listening deeply it's it's once again everything you're saying is pointing to that term you brought up the self intimacy yeah. where it's that it's that patient calm allowance of of a conversation with self um nadia says wow i was meant to be here today i had to leave work today due to severe pain in my back hi nadia mm -hmm. good to see you back. yeah you know we 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 and that that right there nadia is illuminating and and bringing forth the fact that she had some sort of self intimacy to know she had to leave work early and know she had to log on to the webinar right yes. and paloma Gonzalez, hi sweetheart this is my first time watching a webinar and i'm loving this so glad i listened <laughs> to myself ah and made time to watch and listen to this learning a lot just what i've been needing thank you perfect and hi mary beth good to see you um, advise how to turn on the audio. I ran a settings check. Um, so you just have to, um, uh, I don't know once you're in it, um, but I will be recording your heart and I will send it out to you. I promise. Um, so hi diva. Um, you know, Heather Ash, I feel like, um, what you've been able at least to teach me just through working with you, you know, I, I, you know, acquired your warrior heart book. I left the company. It didn't work out. I watched you kind of cruise through the whole thing. I watched you be who you really are. You, you, I used to say, I always want to only publish people who are the same person on stage as off stage, who are the same person on page as off page. And you really do um, embody this, um, this calm, compassionate um, presence. And so let me ask you, who were you before this? <laughs> 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 just just to illuminate to anybody who's not feeling as on top of the world right now or, or in in the inner workings of this self intimacy like who were you before this and how how long did it take you to really truly understand you say it's a daily practice but when was that moment where you were like you know what i got this i get who i am and this is going to take this is going to be lifelong so, get her done get it done check it off the list how did that happen <laughs> well I used to be like really hard on myself I was incredibly judgmental I had I was very put like self pushy like I've got to do it perfectly and I I have to prove myself and 
it was really I don't think any woman could ever yeah, relate to that. can relate <laughs> unlike any of yeah yeah and you know i think that what shifted for me one day is i remember i locked my keys in, in my car and like people that know me really well know i'm a little bit klutzy and i do things like lock my keys in my it's not unusual so i locked my keys in my car and this little voice in my head said oh sweetie okay let's figure it out and i literally i mean i, I literally looked around like who was that because usually my inner voice would have been like, I can't believe you did it again. What's wrong with you? You're, you're practicing awareness and you're not aware at all. That was my normal you know, self-talk. And so that day I realized I, something shifted drastically. And it's, my inner voices are so different. I still will fall into worrying. And you know, a couple of days ago, I woke up worried about stuff and churning. But I know now it's like, okay, I'm worried about this thing. What am I going to do? Like, and I've learned how to, to self, like you said, like self soothe and navigate and just know that there's a, the, the parts that still go into worry or go into stress, but it just doesn't last that long any lo anymore. So it sounds, it sounds like you have mastered what we all knew how to do as children, which was talk to ourselves. Yeah. and actually have a conversation with you know the soul the spirit the self the heart it sounds like you've integrated that back into your being do you think that this is part of regaining our innocence of of maturing to a level of going back to exactly how we were born <laughs> or Absolutely. do you think this is something that has to come with time and age and wisdom or do you think we were born with the wisdom? We're just remembering it. Yeah, I think we we're born with the wisdom. We're going back to it. I really believe that, that there's, you know, in, in Warrior Heart, the book that's coming, one of the things I talk about is that we each have a big soul, which is our, it's a part of us that knows it's connected to everything. And that is wise. And that is, um, knows that everything is a web. And then there's a part of us that, that I call the little soul that is, gets disconnected. So when we're really young, those two parts are connected. They talk to each other. There's this sense of ease. And you see that with little kids. If you watch little kids that are two years old or younger, it's usually before language. They're like wide open, happy, joy, you know, their emotions flow and they know life's a gift. Like they don't have a doubt. They're not like, you know, this isn't working out for me. They're like, this is the best. Yeah. Well, and I just traveled for five weeks with my nine-year-old daughter, Mia, who you've met. And yeah, I, I swear, it was like the way she just looked at the world, like when she was tired, she just flat out said it. <laughs> you know, when she was was frustrated or didn't want to talk to anybody, she'd be like, I'm sorry, I just don't want to talk to you anymore. And like, you know, we were in Singapore, which I know you used to live and um, where you used to live and all these Chinese tourists and Japanese tourists wanted their photos taken with her. And at one point she just crossed her arms and she's like, listen, I know I have blonde hair, but I don't want you to take my photo anymore. I'm over it. Like, and I just was like traveling with her for five weeks reminded me of all the ways that we can be genuinely kindly honest yeah. and just, you know, nothing to do with you, love. It's like the four, the four agreements, which, you know, you taught with Don Miguel Ruiz for so long. It's like, don't take anything personally, but I think we say things as if in anticipation of other people taking it personally. Yeah. And that's what ends up setting them up to take it personally. But if you're just like a child in that innocent self-care and that energy, which sometimes has the warrior energy of, you know what? I don't want to talk to you anymore. Love you, mean it, bye. Yeah. You know, I love, I love that you have that in your own conversations and that that can continue to grow as an adult. So, yeah, it's so good to hear about your daughter modeling that and that there's something that I think that's so important is that she does go to the Christian Marty school. So they yeah. do they do actually teach them. Teach them. That. <laughs> yeah, which is beautiful, but that we can you know everybody can be a teacher to us. Like I really yeah. believe we as women we need good guides. It's we really really need good guides. We don't have enough mentoring, we don't have enough role models so that we want to build that, become that, and also find those role models in our life. But that, and, I shouldn't say but, and, 
those role models can be a nine-year-old girl. It can be yeah. the, you know, the little baby that's learning how to walk of like, oh, look how they're falling down over and over again, but they keep getting up. Got it. Absolutely. <laughs> well, Heather Ash, with the teachers, um, you know, Diva and, um, just asked how, um, um, if we could talk a little bit about broken hearts. So if everyone's a teacher and we know theoretically a broken heart is our greatest lesson and the light comes in where the wounds are and we know all of that, but, but can you talk a little bit, I mean, and Diva, just so you know, we're going to have the warrior heart training coming up soon with Heather Ash and that training actually was all about broken hearts. So stay tuned for that when it comes in January, but, but what Heather Ash, um, you know, if you could just talk a little bit about warrior and goddess in a brokenhearted situation and how you would, how you would self-care and self, have that self-intimacy with self during a broken heart, a little bit of help on that might be helpful. Yeah, absolutely. I can share from my own experience that there's two things, there's a million things, but I'll say there's two main things that we want to do when we have that experience of feeling brokenhearted. And the one is to be with the feeling without the story, to just let yourself feel it. And also know, and there's a beautiful quote in Warrior Goddess Training, which is, your, your heart is not a fragile bird. It's a, and I don't remember exactly, but it's a beautiful quote about how strong your heart is. And so to be with your heart, but to realize the heart is incredibly resilient. And so it may feel broken right now. If you bring your love and attention and realize almost always what you're brokenhearted about in the moment is something that you're brokenhearted about from the past that is now up to be healed. And so if you can use it as an opportunity, as a window into a deeper wound, just as you were saying, Zena, and, and can show up with it and ask, what does it need? What's the deeper wound that's coming up to be healed and to stay with it? Then yeah. it takes time. It, but if you're, if you're not busy telling yourself the story about why you're brokenhearted, but being with the broken heart and then opening to like, show me how to use this to open yeah. more, to use my yeah. broken heart to love more rather than to close me down. And I think that's where, again, we need good mentoring and support around this because most of us have learned, unfortunately, I'll, I will, I'll see people that are so bitter and closed down because they've been hurt. Yeah. Um, and that's always where our choice is. Do we choose to use a betrayal or challenge to close down more? Or do we use it to open up and be even more loving? I. I love what you're saying, and I I found that the story is our addiction in so many ways. Mm -hmm. You know, I I had a tumor in my throat last summer, last July 23rd, actually. Um, yes, so that's right. For surgery, and um, I a, a, a energy healer of mine called me or texted me two nights before the surgery, and she goes. I don't know what's going on with you, but for some reason, the angels are saying you have a story stuck in your throat. Does that resonate with you? Am I, am I out in left field? And I was like, are you freaking kidding me? Oh my God, it so resonates. Like, and we started on this text barrage and she was saying like, you're stuck. There's a story that's actually stuck here. What is that story? And what we uncovered was it was a story of suffering. Right. So my son's birth defect was the reason I started my business and became successful. Okay. So a trauma led to success. Right. Oh, interesting. Okay. So I'm stuck on trauma being what's going to lead to success. All right. Our town almost burned down. My, my author, Michaela Bohm, who's a dear friend who wrote Wild Woman's Way, her house burned down while I was presenting her book in New York okay, I was stuck on that story. Her suffering, I was okay, my house survived. Uh-oh, I better get this tumor. Like, there was all this subconscious shit that was actually addicted to the story. Not even realizing, but the story was there was a hook in there where that was how I thought I was getting what I needed in life. 
Therefore, subconsciously, that, that was the hook. So with a broken heart, I've noticed, or with an, a, a pain story, um, you know, the, there's somehow we're getting attention or a payoff from that. And that honestly was where I was, I was hooked into this reality. We did energy work around releasing the story. And the reason why it was stuck in my throat was because I wasn't telling a story of I'm successful because I worked really hard and that's how it happened. I created a multi-million dollar business because I was inspired by my son, but then this is, I actually worked really hard and earned it. I was not, it was all about, oh, the suffering of the tea workers. Therefore I had to become fair trade. Therefore only then could I become successful because their suffering made me want to fight. And so I feel like, you know, all of us, Diva and all of us, if we were to dig into what those stories are that are, that are underlying all of our behavioral hooks, we would actually find that we might be addicted or we might be hooked into something that is actually causing us harm because there's somehow a payoff. So Vanessa, um, Heather Ash, um, do you have, Vanessa's asking, do you have any books on this tailored to teen girls? I would love for my daughter to know this as she's growing into a young woman. Um, I think Warrior Goddess Training, actually. I, I mean, I've been reading sections of it to Mia as we were traveling through Asia, and she's nine, and she was really getting it. So Vanessa, I, I don't know, Heather Ash, have you seen younger girls read the book or had their moms read the book to them? Yeah, absolutely. So it's written simply enough and clearly enough that that young women would definitely get it. So we've definitely had a lot of, of young teenagers and even um, like nine years old exactly read. So if you want to read with her so that if there's a part that she doesn't understand, you can explain. Sometimes, I mean, that's the one thing. I did have a young girl read Warrior Goddess Training and be like, I don't get parts of it. Like, cause she hadn't, she didn't have as much domestication. So she was like, why do adults <laughs> hurt so much? Yeah, yeah. I mean, basically she was Are like, what are the stories? Like, what's the deal? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. So Vanessa says, I'm so happy to know I can read it with her. I just got it today. So, okay, great. Well, yeah. I mean, I, find, I was, I, I find that as we're, as we're evolving and as we're, moving through this self-intimacy and, and learning to talk to ourselves, that, that tends to start to shape the conversation with the people around us. Don't you find, yeah, you know, when absolutely. you started actually listening to yourself, tell us like one instance or an example of how your actual communications with those around you shifted. Like, did you say like one day you were like, oh yeah, I'll just do this out of obligation and then I'd get sick or something. And then one day I realized like, you know, I've been kind of in this conversation with myself and I'm just tired. I want to rest today. I love you and I'm not going or give us a little bit around that. Yeah, absolutely. What I found is that as I started to build my, my self-compassion and self-intimacy, that two things happened. One was... I realized that I didn't have to use a lot of words with people. Like I was a big explainer and talk and, and, and trying to fix everybody. Right. And actually what shift is I went into silence for 40 days and it was really a hugely transformative time in my life and really difficult, but really beautiful. And I came out the other side and I just realized I don't really need words. I just need to hold the energy and people feel it and people heal themselves because they feel seen. When you're present with people, when you just show up, and that starts when you show up with yourself, as you get more intimate with yourself and start being compassionate and loving to yourself, and this is what I saw directly, it just emanates out to everybody. And I, st I wasn't judging anybody. I was just really curious and present with them and, and wanting to know who they were. And that was revelatory for some people because they'd never had that experience before. So I think that that's... So yeah, living that energy of self-intimacy and compassion and self-awareness takes less effort. It might take more effort within us, but it takes less effort within our families and relationships and community. Don't you find that to be the case? Absolutely. Absolutely. That place of when you get back into your authenticity and your authenticity isn't something out there that you have to go find. It's something that you have to let everything else go so your authenticity comes up. 
And once you've cleared enough and you're just in that authentic place, just like you were saying with Mia, like, I'm tired, I'm done. Yeah. That yeah. It, it's effortless because you're not trying to be someone else. And what starts yeah. to happen, and I've had people say this to me before, they're like, you know, you on a power journey versus you cleaning the toilet is the same thing. And I'm like, yep, basically. Like there is a difference in my life because I'm just who I am. I'm not trying to be something else. And yeah. it's such a relief. It takes so much less yeah. energy, but it takes a lot to get there. That's just the truth. And the liberation. I, I feel like it takes, like you were saying earlier in the ceremony, that it takes a daily like it's a moment by moment experience of like okay sweetheart how are you feeling like you know if I start to feel uncomfortable like um well for instance I had this experience my last day in Sri Lanka this was maybe three days four days ago and I felt called to go to the churches that were blown up in the terrorist attacks of Easter Sunday and everybody was like everybody in California, my parents, everybody was like, stay away. It's not your fight. That's ISIS. You're Xena. You live in California. You're safe. Like, don't do it. Mm. It's scary. And when I, it was interesting because when I got there, every single person I met from the driver who picked us up at the airport to the driver who took us back to the airport, you know, three and a half weeks later, everyone had a very personal experience with the, with what happened. The driver who brought it, picked us up from the airport had lost six family members. Mm -hmm. And he and I, we spent a solid couple hours really deeply like making eye contact and, and touching hands and, and talking about it. And, um, and then the driver on the way home, he said, Oh, I live, three buildings over from the church here that was blown up the biggest one and the one that was all over the press. Yeah. He said, I would be honored if, if you, if I could take you there today is the first day it's been open in three months and it's Sunday and there are people are there paying alms. Can I take you there? And I was like, absolutely. And so what I find is even though other people are telling us that's dangerous, that's not okay, you shouldn't think that, don't want that, don't go there, why would you take your daughter into that situation, like, blah, blah, blah. It was like this deep yearning, and something in me was calling for that, but once I got there, all I did was hold people's hands mm -hmm. and cry with them. And I was the only white chick around. I didn't speak, they didn't speak English. I didn't speak Singhali or Tamil. And all of a sudden it was like this connectivity. And I left Sri Lanka knowing that's what I went for. You know, yes, I visited the tea fields. Yes, I brought Mia to work in the tea. Like we got that, but that was actually what I came for. And that absolutely could not have been anything that came from someone else because everyone told me that was the most dangerous thing to do. And so what I find about your teachings is that that listening takes immense courage and the courage takes immense self-reflection mm -hmm. that overpower the outer, the outer conversations and the outer reflection. And once you're there, all, all of the, like, my dad, after all of that, was like, you did the right thing, Z. After he was like, don't go, don't, don't go, don't go. go. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then after all that, he's like, you know, you did the right thing. That was really, truly wonderful that you did that. And it was like, oh, okay. But if we don't listen and take that chance, how will we ever show them, not that they're wrong, but that we in ourselves as our original beings are on a path that does end up becoming an illuminating path for others. It really takes that self intimacy that you're talking about. Yeah, I mean, look at you, Heather Ash, you're on the road full time. You've <laughs> dedicated your heart and soul and life. You were living in New York City, successful publicity agent, doing all the stuff that looks to other people like, whoa, she's arrived, she's made it. And then all of a sudden, it's like, no, I'm actually going to go off and learn shamanism, and I'm going to walk on fire. I mean, for the people in your life, like, WTF? Like, and then all of a sudden, now they're like, oh, I'm so glad you did that. Yeah. Basically. <laughs> yeah. 
Yeah, it's such a beautiful story, Zena. And just it just shows your heart and your presence and your willingness to show up. And it, that is like just for me, the definition of warrior goddess is that that willingness to walk towards the fear, whatever the fear is, even if it's other people's fear, but that willingness to listen to your calling and show up. And for me, if we can, you know, my passion is just like help women to let go of enough stuff so they can just show up. Because if women show up and are in the present and are not comparing themselves or judging themselves or tearing themselves down, everything's going to change. Yeah. Everything. You're, will change. you're, you're a million quadrillion trillion bazillion correct percent correct. I, I have a chapter in my book, life by the cup that was just show up. And it was, I showed up to some guy's, tea you know coffee house to ask him if I could buy it with no money and I was like I'm crazy what am I doing and I'd written a whole business plan but once I got there he was like I'm not going to do this but your ideas are so brilliant why don't I bring you on as a consultant and I'll pay you to do this for me and I was like well there's a catch I need to have my son with me because he has a birth defect and he's a baby no one can watch him but me and he was like all right bring him and it was like wait okay like that courage it takes to just show up, if we were to just do that, we're 80, 90% of the way there. Okay. I feel like the courage starts to, starts to generate after we get our foot in the water. Then all of a sudden we know where we're going. Like, the, like divinity in action meets us where we take that first step. Yeah, exactly. So, so true. Yeah. Oh, Heather. If I could just have you move into my house and talk to me all the time and we could have tea every morning, it would be amazing. That. that would be amazing. <laughs> and so for, for those of you who have joined us, thank you so much for bringing your light to this conversation. If any of you have any questions for Heather Ash now, um, you can type them right into the chat. We've had a conversation going over here. Um, and so many of you have, um, have sent beautiful notes. So if any of you would like to ask Heather Ash um, or myself any further questions, um, we would love to um, be able to answer them. Um, and as we're waiting for you guys to either come up with them or um, decide not to ask a question, just know that this will be recorded and emailed to you if you registered. Um, you can also join Club Magic Hour at clubmagichour.com. There's memberships starting at $11 up to $66 a month. And you receive all the teaching videos and you receive all of these kinds of interactions and some tea to go with it um, in a tea and transformation subscription box. Oh yeah, Heather Ash's tea. Can I just say? <laughs> This is my zone of genius right here, baby. That's the zone of genius, baby. That's amazing. Oh, my God. April and lychee. I remember. The yeah. And, and the violet jars. Lemongrass. Oh, God, the prism. Yeah. yeah. I need, I know, I need to go get it. But, but basically, um, my vision with Magic Hour is after Wall Street took Gypsy Tea from me, which is a pain story. I actually was able to rebloom in a way that was more authentic to me in bringing together authentic transformational teachings with amazing organic tea and bringing them together into a monthly ceremony that can become part of your life. So my vision is to unite the world through tea and to unify our hearts um, with the ceremony um, of mindful well-being, which is tea. And so when um, Heather Ash and I got together in her um, Airstream and had a little tea ceremony, um, I just thought, I've arrived. This is my destiny. And it took some courage, I have to say. Getting yeah. fired from my last tea company by, you know, refusing to yield to diet teas. They launched a bunch of diet teas, which I was like, don't diminish women. No. Um, anyway, so I, I had the courage to get fired. And now that has been reborn into a much more authentic vision and bringing my loves together. So um, yes, Vanessa, we're definitely going to have a tea retreat in California. I've had several around ready um, when I launched Life by the Cup, but this time we'll bring the teachers together and um, 
And just so you guys know, um, Heather Ashamara can be, um, you can go look on her website, heatherashamara.com and see all of her incredible trainings all throughout the world. I mean, she's an incredible um, warrior goddess who's, who's tireless really um, in trainings and teachings. And, um, and I am simply the receptacle of all this genius. <laughs> I just turn on the video camera and make the tea and then here we go. But um, so for any of you who want to learn more about Heather Ashamara, please go to her website. Um, uh, Vanessa says, Heather Ash, I love your daily spark emails. Thank you so much for those. Um, Roxanne says, changing trauma to triumph. Yes, I'd love to do a blog about your story. Roxanne, absolutely send us a note. Um, you can send me or Heather Ash a note. We'll share with each other. We're fully um, collaborative and um, we would love to um, thank you, Cynthia. Thank you so much for joining us for this. Cynthia says, thank you so much for this wonderful evening. And um, for those of you who want to know more about Heather Ash, heatherashamara.com and um, clubmagichour.com. Thank you so much for joining us, you guys. And your generosity with yourself will lead to a better world. So mm -hmm. let's go have that conversation with our hearts. So thanks, Rebecca. Thank you, Roxanne. Thanks, thanks. Paloma. Aw. Thanks, Navtej. Good to see you, lovey. Thanks, mm -hmm. Nadia. Mwah. Good to see you, Angel. Okay. All right, Heather Ash. Thanks. So, oh, hi, Roberta. You raised a hand. Oh, let's see one last thing. Um, okay. Oh, I can't see what happened. Anyway. All right, sister. I am so glad I got to see your sparkling face tonight. And um, thank you so much for the goddess, uh, warrior goddess box. I am going to be um, promoting this till, you know, I am old and gray and retired. <laughs> <laughs> I love it, love it. And the Warrior Goddess Creed, I put it up in Mia's room. It's so pretty. You've got such a beautiful well, with it. I know, but just in general, I mean, just yeah. the simple wisdom and the and the the kindness and the genius and that. Thank you so much for writing mm. that You're for so all you do. And so I will be super in touch. We're going to do a bunch of promotion for the last few days of your yes. month and your box. And, um, and I will talk to you really soon. All right, sweetheart. Mwah. Bye, everybody. Good night. Take good okay, care. Bye, Diva. Bye, Bye everyone. Bye. 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 Bye.